spreading the Muslim faith, spreading the religion. Came in because I saw the big basketball game, big U of L game. Ooh, yes, saw the fighting. I said, I know all about fighting. I retired from the <laughs> ring, but I still know a good left jab when I see one. <laughs> so before I do my old to Louisville basketball, before I do my poem, got some quick scores for you last night. Temple beat North Carolina. Proved everybody their number one. Beat them 83 to 66. Purdue beat Indiana 95 to 85. Missouri beat Oklahoma State 92 to 70. And Illinois got the best of Wisconsin 85 to 65. Well, I'm feeling pretty good. I told you I've been spreading the Muslim faith. Got a man named Buckwheat to change to the religion, change the Muslim faith. His new name now is Kareem O'Wheat. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there, but yes, here's my poem in honor of the big wind over got over South Carolina. It's called Old to Basket Brawl. The Old to Basket Brawl, ladies and gentlemen, the champ. That's right. The Louisville Cardinals proved they had what it took. Forget about the three-pointer. Let's throw down a left hook. Purvis is a player. So tough he'll amaze ya. And his shoulder fan, he's got a jab. A lot like Joe Frazier. The Bradford was hit. And in stepped Mr. Crook. He said, forget about my jumper. And check out my left hook. It was a rugged game. One of the toughest I ever saw. It gave a new meaning to the term basket brawl. So that's all of my poem. And I'm done with my rhyme. Congratulations to the Cardinals. A TKO win in double overtime. Ladies and gentlemen, the champ. Some people get it. Some people don't. Yeah, Why aren't you calling me right now? Apparently, Traffic McGill has uh, spent... <laughs> Now, what was that phone bill for? About eight grand? The Diamond it, it, John's? Was, it was for over $200. And Diamond John's an older guy, and his heart's not in great shape. He almost died. He gets the phone bill, $8,000. Guess what? 976 Gab. A lot of time on the Gab line. Yeah. Hi, I do the traffic. To, uh, no, Uncle Ron, I was not the one that made those calls. I'm a radio Mr. personality. I'm a What's radio. your name? <laughs> so anyway, now Mr. Rodding, as a result, has the, the phone the system mic, at the station the fixed. Mic. We can't dial out of Jeffersonville. We cannot make a long-distance call. So a lot of the birthday calls I can't make because of uh, young traffic McGill's. Uh, I'm calling from the station right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, baby, what do you look like? Your parents gone? <laughs> Can I come over? Let's have a pillow fight. Okay, here we go. Joke of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Move uh -oh. your old people, your plants, your young children warning. away from the radio. Alert. Alert. Warning. Warning. You have been warned. Alert. Uncle Ron's Asylum is intended for a mature adult audience. Uh -oh. Parental discretion is advised. That's right. We say that, folks, so that uh, those of you who are offended by this broadcast will turn it the hell off. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> We had a lady, this is real, lady two weeks ago writes a letter to Mr. Rodding. They're the filthy and the <laughs> joke and these guys. Okay. Uh, that's like two weeks ago. And uh, Friday before I left, Leela comes in, look, another one. The same lady. She's still listening every day. To <laughs> every morning she listens. Yeah, and she writes a letter. That was terrible. You know, you know ma'am, there's a dial on the radio. You know, and you put your hand on it and turn it. It's like when Lennon, <laughs> when Lennon uh, made the uh, remark about the Beatles being bigger than Christ. Diarrhea for brains. They were, <laughs> they were, they were buying Beatles records just so they could burn. So they could burn them. Yeah. <laughs> it's time after we find what we just did. Find the, the asylum organ. No, you just did. <laughs> Gentleman walks into a bar and sees the most beautiful woman he has ever seen oh. in his life. Beautiful face, voluptuous body, everything a man could want. Uncle Ron? Yes, sir. Did she have supple, pouting lips? Oh, my God, yes, of course. <laughs> okay. He goes up to her and says, Hi, can I buy you a drink? No, thank you, she says. Oh, I should say, too, this joke was sent in by uh, who? Oh, thanks, thanks for, for slowing down the joke. <laughs> Just blew the mood. Right in the middle. <laughs> this is from Cynthia. Or no, from Kathy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kathy, I won't use your last name because I don't want weirdos calling you up. Here we go. I'll save that privilege for myself. <laughs> There'll only be one weirdo calling you up. No, thank you, she says. Oh, come on, the man says. Just one drink. The lady turns to him and in a firm tone says, No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. The man says, Why? And she says, Well, uh, I'll tell you the truth. I'm lesbian. Please, just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. The guy says, Oh, no, you, you can't be. I, 
You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. I don't believe it. You just... <laughs> Every once in a while, something beautiful happens on this show. Uh, Lady Di, her, there's a phone pole that is near Lady Di's grave. Ac accidentally... Lips. Slip her the tongue, slide my hands up and down her body, Easy. grab her boobs. Okay. Easy, slow down. Take Ooh. her home and do it to her all night long. The guy jumps up and says, oh my God, I think I'm lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Not the greatest joke of the day we've ever had, I admit that. But uh, so, uh, Kathy, you'll get your asylum shirt for that one. Thank you for the joke. Folks at home, if you have a joke... If you send it to us and we use it, we'll get you an asylum shirt for your trouble. And uh, oh, God. I heard a better one. You guys want to hear it? <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. I got to do this one. Uh, where's this? Ba -ba 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 -ba. What's this? Oh, guy's name is Lawrence Lewis. Lawrence, great joke. Two prostitutes standing on a street corner. One looks at the other and says, you know, I think I've been in this business too long. And her friend says, well, why do you say that? She goes, well, I, I can smell man thing in the air. And her <clears> friend <throat> says, no, no, I, I just burped. Woo! <laughs> 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 oh. Man, you're going to get in trouble. It's, uh, well, you know the address, ma'am. Just go ahead and send it in, will you? 726 at QMF, sunny and warm today, high in the low 80s. Get your plants out of the room for a few moments, please. Well, God, we have to do this out of a, a warped, misplaced sense of something. I don't know Uncle what. Ron's Asylum is intended for a mature adult audience. Mm -hmm. Parental discretion is advised. That's right, it's time, it's time, it's time. Ooh, oh, wow. oh, wow. Oh, wow. God. Ladies. <laughs> That's not paid for. Are you blind Ooh, yet? That's a big boy. Here we go. <laughs> this came to us from Colonel Jack in the Windy Hill Thoroughbreds in Simpsonville, Kentucky. Today's joke of the day, and that, of course, gets them the much sought-after asylum shirt. If you have a joke you think uh, would qualify here, send it to us. If we use it, we'll get you a shirt. Oh, let's see here. Question. Gentlemen. Yes. Why are cowgirls bow-legged? Cowgirls bow legged. Why are cowler? No, 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 we, we don't know. Why are cowgirls <laughs> bow legged? That's, that's because cowboys always eat with their hats on. <laughs> <laughs> First Willie and then this. What is going on in this broadcast? Oh, Move your old people, your plants, your kids out of the room, please. For God's sake. <laughs> Give them a few minutes for the old people. For the love of God, get them out of the room now. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Uncle Ron's asylum is intended oh. for a mature adult audience. Hmm? Parental discretion is advised. Well, here's the portion of the broadcast that uh, so many women here in the Quad State area enjoy. Oh, ooh. Who told yeah, you that? They love to watch a guy... Stroke the old asylum organ here this morning. Let's, yes, sir. Let me just uh, remind everyone today's joke of the day is brought to you by White Mountain Cooler. Some people get it, some people don't. We do. Mm. Oh, gee. Hopefully you will. Gotta hate watching that joke. <laughs> well, then turn your head. You know, Rick Miller sent and this cough. to us. Rick. <laughs> Go ahead. We had a weird doctor. He puts his hand on your wallet and says, cuff. <laughs> okay, come on. Can I do the joke here, please? He grabbed, he grabbed my knee, told me to turn my head, and <laughs> hit me in the crotch with a hammer. <laughs> with a hammer. Rick Miller <laughs> sent this to us. Rick, an asylum shirt is on its way to you. And you folks at home, if you want to mail us a joke, if we use it out here, you'll get an asylum shirt absolutely free. Here we go. Good delivery. Joke of the day. <laughs> a pretty, voluptuous college lady is leading a very active sex life, mm. despite... A mild heart condition that flares up from time to time. Ooh. One evening, this young lady brings home her latest infatuation, home to dinner. Her father is oblivious to his daughter's past sexual ex escapades. Oblivious. But, suspecting that she might be getting serious with this young man, the father takes it upon himself to say a few words to the guy. Concerned, of course, that he was, or that his daughter was perhaps hiding her heart condition from this guy. The father approaches him during a lull in the evening and says, I, I think there's something you should know about my daughter, the father said. The boy 
boy's face turns fearful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the father says, she has a cute angina. Oh. And the boy says, yeah, I know. she got great boobs, too. <laughs> 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 True story. That's Tom Yule. Had Women, that old organ. Women love it when you fondle your organ. I know that from experience. In fact, I'm going to... Oh, oh, oh. 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 Hey, look at his one eyes roll time. back in his head like that. That second one was for you, ladies. Here we go. What a stud. <laughs> I've heard that before. Okay, here we go. Joke of the day. This one was sent in by Chuck Short. <laughs> That's the joke of the day right there. No, 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 no. Come on, come on. This is from Chuck Short, who lives in New Albany. Chuck, we have an asylum shirt for you. No, Uncle Ron. That's in Albany. In Albany. Okay. Albany. Oh, okay. George, guy named George, took his girlfriend to bed for the very first time. Oh. He was working away very hard, trying to make all the right moves, do everything perfectly. Yeah. And the lady is just not responding at all. We've been there. Finally, in exasperation, <laughs> George sits up and asks her, what's the matter, sweetheart? And she says, well, it's your organ. I don't think it's big enough. Oh, bummer. To which George replied, well, I, I didn't think I'd be playing in a cathedral either. <laughs> <laughs> when I run out of milk for this crew, I know just where to stop on my way home. We're here for your convenience. My Convenient always has a fresh supply of milk, eggs, and all the dairy products we need. And at competitive prices. We're here for your convenience at Convenient Food Mart. I can park at the door and get in and out in no time. I really do rely on My Convenient. At Convenient Food Mart, we're here for your convenience every day. With all the food and drinks your family needs and brands you know and trust. We've added new services to meet your needs, like a fresh deli and video ramp.
<laughs> I love that. Oh, I love it. It's a great Monty Python. Still no sign of land. It's 841 here at QMF. We're going to do our joke of the day rejects in a few minutes. Some of the worst jokes you've probably ever heard in your life sent to us uh, for asylum shirts. In fact, the worst joke I think I've ever seen or heard is on top of the pile. We'll read those for Or you held. In a, in a few moments, right here on the asylum. <laughs> Second biggest joke. Q, I bet. <laughs> It's going to be sunny with a high in the mid-60s today. It's 842 here at Kim Epson Stones. Mature adult audience. Parental discretion is advised. <laughs> Today's joke of the day is being brought to you by White Mountain Coolers. Some people get it, some don't. That's right. And now my favorite part of the show. Oh, 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 oh calm, calm down. Oh, easy run. His eyes just <laughs> roll back in his head. Oh, it's been a long weekend. <laughs> 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 a long, lonely weekend. I'm kidding. Right God, here. you know, I I pray that one day you do get a taker. Why is that? Well, I know you get a little bit tired of doing that yourself every day. <laughs> <laughs> you just get to go higher than five bucks. You gotta whip this thing into submission. <laughs> <laughs> Here's our joke of the day. Don't break it. This is an anonymous joke of the day. This was uh, given to us yesterday. Barry and I were at uh, Bluegrass Hyundai with a can. And some weirdo walked up and here's a joke. <laughs> so I took it. He's not getting his shirt either because he didn't give us an address or anything. I don't think he even knows what a shirt is, actually. Well, he bothered to write it down, though, in crayon. Here we go. No, I wrote it down. Oh, okay. Why, gentlemen, why do Scotsmen wear kilts? <laughs> why, why do Scotsmen wear kilts? Why? Because most sheep are terrified by the sound of a zipper. <laughs> <laughs> we apologize to any Scott American listeners. We may have this one. I can laugh at that because I'm Scottish. 722 at QMF Bob Quinn. And I admit it. You have a weak stomach, squeamish. Yuck. Please, leave the room. Flip the dial for a few minutes. Go on down to that team station and come on back when you've had enough of that crap. <laughs> Uncle Ron's Asylum is intended for a mature Let's adult dance. audience. Uh-huh. Parental discretion is advised. Ooh, Let's not whoa, say whoa. we did. Oh, God. It's time for the joke of the day. That's my... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And today's joke of the day is being brought to you by White Mountain Coolers. Some people get it, some don't. You're working at the wrong station. So just a quick impression. It's 721. That's my favorite part of the day. <laughs> Ooh. Easy. We have a bonus situation for you this morning, ladies and gentlemen. We had uh, Barry and myself Sunday. We're at uh, Bluegrass Hyundai on Shelbyville Road with a can. We had a lot of folks who came out. Some guy brought us a big page of jokes. I've sifted through these things over the weekend. And out of 50 jokes, it is there's a big... three on here we can use. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use the rest at the islands Thursday night. There you go. Anyway, we have a triple joke of the day situation this morning. Rapid fire jokes, we call these in radio. Super. Boom, boom, boom. Here Just we go. like that. First joke. Did you guys hear that IBM is coming out with a new presidential version selective typewriter? No. Um, no. This model will have no memory and no colon. <laughs> 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 joke number two. <laughs> oh, God. Does that ever hurt? Yeah. <laughs> yes, but it's, it's, it's a good pain. <laughs> It hurts so good. It's a good hurt. In the okay. words of the immortal John. You guys know what makes a bull sweat? A bull sweat. What makes a bull sweat? Don't know. A tight jersey. Okay, I'll scratch that one off the list. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm stupid. I, I don't, I don't, I don't get, it. get it either. You guys, this is great. Did you guys hear that the Pope performed a miracle yesterday? No. <laughs> Tell us. He turned an anorexic woman with a yeast infection into a quarter pounder with cheese. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rude. God. That is rude. <laughs> Save me from these jokes of the day. I'd like to apologize at this time to all anorexic women with yeast infections in the city. And all quarter pounders <laughs> with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more. This is not... On the bonus joke, this is somebody just called me in or called with this one in here. Real quick, what do you get when you cross Ronald Reagan with James Dean? <laughs> I don't know. A 
rebel without a clue. <laughs> Is the asylum? You knew that, of course, but I said it anyway. It's I'd like to apologize to James Dean. Shut up. Get he, out of here. He's dead, Barry. Oh. 725 at QMF. Sunday. You didn't know that? His With ghost, then. High in the low 60s today. Here's Steve Woodward at QMF. <laughs> God, it feels easy, good. big boy. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever call him big boy again. You talking to me or the Oregon here, eh? Huh? Well, I'm pushing for a raise. Yeah. <laughs> pushing for a raise. Okay. Well played. Here we go. Joke of the day. Here we go. Gentlemen. Yes, sir. There's a guy standing on the corner scratching his butt. Scratches his butt for a few minutes and takes it, <laughs> takes his finger and sticks it up his nose. <laughs> Either of you guys know what that is? I know him. Uh, no. What is that? That's a moron doing crack. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him too. I know the guy. I know that guy. Yeah, I went to high school with him. Anyway. Derby time. Duck. Move your old people, your plants, your kids out of the room. Put them in the garage for a minute, please. Hit the dirt. Uncle Ron's Asylum is intended for a mature adult audience. Parental discretion is advised. We have uh, this... Today we have sort of a dual joke situation we're dealing with. And today's, today's dual joke of the day <laughs> is being brought to you by White Mountain Cooler. Some people get it, some don't. These jokes were sent to us from Christina in Louisville. We won't use your last name, Christina. Your Asylum shirt is waiting for you. Okay. Uh, Uncle Ron? Yes, sir. Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, oh my goodness. Never. I can never forget that. that. That's my favorite part of this show. You were remiss in your oh, organ. It's your favorite part of life. You know, well, uh, okay, some of us are lonely, okay? <laughs> all right, okay, all right. Are you a lot of it or what? I'm sorry, I didn't Boy, realize. Boy, young new stud. Don't, you know, he's got to rub everybody's nose in it. Don't get him started again. <laughs> These jokes from Christina... So defensive. It's kind of symbolic because her jokes deal with... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about here, hopefully. If you don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <There were two. laughs> Quite simply. It's what you Barry just told you. Some people get it, some don't. There were two women apparently sitting in a triple X theater watching a triple X movie. <gasps> One of the ladies suddenly reaches over and taps her friend on the shoulder and says, Lisa... This guy sitting next to me is abusing himself. Her friend says, well, just ignore him, and he'll stop doing it. And Lisa says, I can't ignore him. He's using my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ron's asylum is intended for a mature adult audience. Parental discretion is advised. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, one more. Thank I saw you. that. I saw that in Diner. Here's our, our second popcorn box joke yeah. on this double joke day here at uh, the Asylum. Oh, oh God. God. Negatives. Love that. God, it's got to, you're going to bruise it. There's a, <laughs> won't be the first time, huh? Get out of here. You're going to get a blister on it. A pre oh, oh, please. Now, people right, are eating well, breakfast sorry, okay. here. You are... <clears throat> God. Open source. A preacher walks into the restroom at church. He sees two young boys abusing themselves. <gasps> Why is it, Christina, you sent us two self-abuse jokes here this morning? I don't understand this. Women love it when you... Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Not according to Lenny Bruce. They love that stuff. Here we go. Preacher walks into the restroom of church. He sees two young boys abusing themselves and says, Boys, if you keep doing that, you're going to go blind. Two boys look at each other, smile, and one of them says to the preacher, I, I guess you're right, Father. How about if we just do it till we need glasses? <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. Thank you for that joke of the day, Christina. If you send us a joke and we use it on the radio, you get the much coveted fashion statement of the night. It's be on the asylum shirt. Clank Uncle Ron? Yes, sir. How many fingers am I holding up? None. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, my God, he needs glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> you're on the verge of blindness. Yeah, it's kind of tough to tell jokes on a day like this, but oh, we are paid professionals. We'll go ahead and do it anyway.
Get out of the room. If you can't stand the heat, get the hell out of here. Uncle Ron's Asylum is intended for a mature adult audience. That's right. Parental discretion is advised. Will you stop making weird noises every time he says that? I'm not making those noises. Well, who did that? Was it wasn't me. Was no. It me? May have been. Oh, jeez. If, if it were, I'd really see a doctor. Today's joke of the day Check is being brought to you by White Mountain Coolers. Some people get it, some don't. <laughs> Uncle Ron's <laughs> Asylum is intended for a mature you adult did audience. That, Parental discretion is advised. I'm sorry, my engineer's a moron. Oh, Don, Don oh, Hardo. Oh, oh, take it easy. Oh. I'm amazed you still you can feel yeah, that. Okay, don't even comment, okay? Just keep it to yourself. Today's joke from Ken Moore, Louisville. Thank you, Ken. Your Asylum shirt is your Asylum shirt. <laughs> Here we go. It's got your name on it. <laughs> we have a triple joke situation to deal with this morning because Ken gave us three pages of jokes, out of which only three are uh, usable. Studio we'll audience. We'll keep the rest for the islands next Thursday, assuming we're invited <laughs> back. If it's well, assuming they, they, they pull it out of the river by then. All right, you guys hear about the gentleman who made his fortune selling cough medicine that was made out of x lax Oh, no. No. Guy made a fortune. Selling cough medicine made out of x lax Did he? Didn't do much for your cold, but you'd be afraid to cough. All right. Gonna scratch that one off. Is it me? Violet. Am I, uh, am no, I slow this morning? Terrible joke. Okay. When, sniveling when aren't you husband slow, looks Barry? up at his wife. Sniveling, sniveling husband. And he says, how come you never tell me when you have an orgasm? And his wife looks at him and says, well, because you're never here. <laughs> <laughs> And our last in a series of three this morning. I like morning. that one. Did you guys hear about the... <laughs> did you guys hear about the ugly woman who had two chances to get pregnant? No. No. She blew them both. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> Derby time is just around the corner, and the employees at... Move your... Move. Just move, okay? Just get the hell out of here, quick. Save yourselves. <laughs> Don't listen. Just leave us here and save yourselves, please, for God's sake. Uncle Ron's sake. Asylum is intended for a mature adult audience. Parental discretion uh, is advised. Waiting for this all weekend. Go ahead, Okay, Barry. today's joke of the day is being brought to you by White Mountain Coolers. Some people get it, some don't. Excuse me? Oh. Oh, Ron. Oh. Oh. Look. oh. Fondling the asylum organ. A Loving picture it. of that, and I make millions. Loving. You mean you you went all weekend and didn't? Uh... I deliberately waited for oh. today. You God. did. God. How did you do that? <laughs> At my no, age, no. it's not hard. Okay, it's you're, right. you're peaking late. A lady went to a doctor <laughs> for a checkup. After the examination, the doctor takes her into his office and told her that she was fine, but he said. He couldn't help noticing she had a big Y imprinted on her chest. Mm. And the lady, a little embarrassed, says, Oh, uh, don't worry about that. My, my boyfriend goes to Yale, and he likes to wear his school sweater when we make love. <laughs> Next day, another lady comes into the same office for a checkup. After the exam, the doctor tells her that she's fine, but he couldn't help noticing that she had a big H <laughs> imprinted on her chest. Hmm. The lady says, oh, uh, don't worry about that, Doc. My boyfriend goes to Harvard, and he likes to make love with his school sweater on. Harvard and Yale. Later on that same week, ironically enough... <laughs> I went to Campbellsville. Straight week. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> I went to reform school. Another lady comes into the office for a checkup. The doctor notices a big W imprinted on her chest and says, I, I see by that W imprint on your chest that your boyfriend goes to Wisconsin, and he likes to... Make love wearing his school sweater. And the lady says, no, no, uh, I don't have a boyfriend that goes to Wisconsin. But I do have a girlfriend that goes to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Uh, 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 <laughs> I get that one. Oh, it's terrible. Looking for value, look to hook. Duck. Take shelter, move your kids, your old people, your plants away from the radio, please. It's verbal dodgeball. 
<laughs> Uncle Ron's Asylum is intended for a mature adult audience. That's right. Parental discretion is advised. So get out of here. Today's joke of the day is being brought to you by White Mountain Coolers. Some people get it, some don't. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh. And he gets it every morning. Every Boy. morning. And we... You know, I think we might even have a bonus joke situation here because when you... Well, on the topic of fondling your organ... Uh-huh. That was a cute joke you just told me there, Troy. Why don't you go ahead and repeat that for the folks? Oh, what joke is that? Guy that goes into the bar? Guy goes into a bar. Oh, okay. He goes up to the bartender, sits down. He says, give me two shots of whiskey. Uh, drinks one and pours one in his hand. Does it again. Two, two shots of whiskey. Drinks one, pours one in his hand. Does this five or six times, and the uh, bartender says, sir, I really don't understand why you, why you do that. And he said, well, I'm getting my date drunk. <laughs> Oh. What do you think? Ooh. You know, I've never been a real good teller of a joke. <laughs> well? Well, you know what it, what they say about <laughs> but I'm good a, a, successful, a successful <laughs> joke. What it all depends on is... Timing. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Joke of the day. Really? Ten men and one woman go on a fishing expedition. Holy mackerel. They are out there in the woods for you get it? two weeks. Holy, Holy mackerel. mackerel. That was a good, get one. It, the fish good thing. one, Scoop. Good one. Getting better. There's your rim shot. Why don't you get away from the microphone? Let me finish the joke. Don't ever rim shot me again. <laughs> Ten men, one woman go fishing. Two weeks later, they've been out in the woods for two weeks fishing. They come back. The men have all come back with bluegill. I need uh, you gentlemen to tell me what, <laughs> what, bluegill. Did, what did the lady come back with? <laughs> Do you know that one, Barry? I'm, I'm afraid. I'm I don't afraid know. to say. A red snapper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 Saw that one coming. It's right it? in the face. Uh, <laughs> Saw it coming for miles. 723 at QMF. We'll be right back. Derby time. Some people get it, some don't. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, women love it when you play with your organ. Here we go. As long as they don't have to watch. <laughs> we do. <laughs> this yeah. is from R. Hill. Thank you, R. Here's our joke of the day. A man walks into a into the patent office carrying a large red apple and he asks the patent officer for a patent for the apple. And the patent officer says, uh, I can't give you a patent for that. It's it's an ordinary apple. And the man says, No, no, this this apple tastes like three different fruits, an orange, a pineapple, and an apple. Hmm. In disbelief, the patent officer says, Let me get a taste of that. He picks the apple up, officer takes a bite and says, Gee, that, that tastes like the Give me. That tastes like an orange, all right. <clears throat> the guy says, now turn that around a little bit and take another bite. So the patent officer does and says, gee, it, this side tastes like a pineapple. The guy says, well, turn it around a little bit more and take another bite. So the patent officer turns it around, takes another bite, and says, you're right. This tastes like three different fruits. And he issues him a patent. Hmm. A few months later, the same man brings back another apple into the patent office and told the same patent officer that... He had another apple that tasted like <coughs> woman thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how else to put it. And he would like a patent for it. And the patent officer says, okay, wait, I'm going to have to taste this before I can give you a patent. <laughs> sure. The man agrees, agrees, gives the uh, patent officer the apple. The officer takes a large bite from the apple. Yeah. Makes a <laughs> terrible face, spits the apple out of his mouth and says, bah! This is terrible. It tastes like crap. And the guy says, uh, turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're rude. <laughs> I apologize to all of our females. Tonight's the night where you just get it, some don't. We were out last night at the brewery for a Pegasus punch party. We had a great time. Roebuck got sick. That's how much fun we had. <laughs> a, a lady, in fact, a, a married couple, a guy and lady came up to me and said that we got a great joke for the joke of the day. And I told her, listen, if I tell people you told me this joke, they're not going to believe me. This was told to me by a, a married lady. Beautiful, beautiful uh, lady. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting nervous about that. <laughs> anyway. Because your wife's listening. She asked me, straight-faced, Uncle Ron, what is the difference between a wife and a hooker? What is the difference between a wife and a hooker, Uncle Ron? A hooker's cheaper. 
<laughs> I swear to God, a lady told me that last night. Please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to get killed. You haven't even been married. <laughs> and you got it. <laughs> 723 on the asylum. Cloudy, cool today, mid 50s. <laughs> this is Neil Young, Q Man. Deserves to hear this joke. I love you, audience. folks. Parental discretion is advised. Putting, Play, it, all, putting it all on the line this morning for you the audience. Oh, no. Play, you're is. going too far. They deserve it. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Golly. Thought we Ooh, saw enough of that last Friday. night. <laughs> Today's uh, joke of the day, however graphic it may seem, is being brought to you by White Mountain Cooler. Some people get it. Some don't. We you can't know, gonna, stop him. I want to warn all of you up front. We're going to use a, a, a medical term for the... Male appendage, okay, on this joke. So if that's going to scare you or hurt you or worry you, get out of here. Male appendage? We'll give you a second here to leave the room. In fact, while I'm waiting... We're going to get in trouble. Oh, oh, oh ooh. Jesus. I can't believe it. God. An elephant, ladies and gentlemen, is stuck in quicksand. He's drowning. And a mouse happens to be walking by, and the elephant flags him down. Please help. Save me. I'm, I'm dying here. So the mouse looks at him and... Takes off running over a little hill, comes back a few minutes later with a Mercedes, <laughs> pulls the elephant out of the quicksand. But a week week or two later, the uh, the mouse is trapped in quicksand, and the elephant's walking by, and the mouse says, Hey, please, help me. Remember me? I, I, I saved you. So the elephant comes over and looks at him and says, Geez, I don't have a Mercedes, but uh, well, let me try something here. So he walks up to the edge of the quicksand. Here we go. Oh, here's, the, here's the part you might not want to listen oh, no. to, folks. Walks over to the edge of the quicksand, <clears throat> puts his penis oh, in, the, oh, in the quicksand. Oh, you can't say penis. The mouse climbs up. He just did say Jumps penis. off. He's saved. Do either of you gentlemen know what the moral of the story is? Uh, I don't know. No. If you have a big penis, you don't need a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> That is a great joke. Okay, okay. So it's a great on. joke. It's a good That's joke, a but you can't say penis. <laughs> so it's a terrific joke. 722 at QMF. You bastard. Join us this afternoon for lunch. The last lunch, we're calling it. The last lunch with the asylum guys. And then our last Thirsty Thursday tonight at Splash. After the parade... Come on in the splash and party with us one more time, won't you please? We Uncle it. Ron's <laughs> Asylum is intended for a Die. mature adult audience. Parental discretion is advised. Come. You are the Messiah. <laughs> Thank you. I rock. You like the sandals? I love them. I made those, <laughs> made those myself, bought those, uh, what? Today's joke of the day is being brought to you by White Mountain Cooler. Some people get it, Got some big don't. Tire on the bottom. Love them. Love the the, love the, uh, the sheet too. Looks yeah. good. Well, you know, the last <laughs> the last lunch. You should dress appropriately. The last lunch today with the asylum. We're having <gasps> burgoo. <laughs> I don't think he had burgoo, but no, I don't think he had. I don't think they had burgoo in those days. But if they if they'd had it, he would have. <laughs> you know, he would have. <laughs> <laughs> got, got burgoo on my robe. Because he never ate a big breakfast. <laughs> burgoo all over my robe here. Okay, I'm sorry to... It's okay. You know, this is gallows humor we're experiencing this morning. We're chortling in the face of death. Trying to maintain a facade of false bravado. Chortle. Well, after, after you've been as married as long as you have, I guess death is kind of a thing. <laughs> He welcomes death. Why do you think I do that every morning? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you've been in hell for 18 years. Can I sleep years. at your house tonight because I ain't going home? <laughs> oh. No way in hell am I going home today. The la last night on earth should not be with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be with the organ, that's all. God. A solo flight. Making love to someone you love. Here we go. Oh, golly. <laughs> this uh, this joke of the day, let me get this from uh, Tom and Georgia Patterson. Folks, thank you very much. They sent us a whole bunch, only a couple of which we can use. <laughs> but uh, you guys each get a shirt for that. Here's our joke of the day. There's a couple of them, actually. 
On their wedding night, this is, I'm getting somber now, this is, this wedding could be our night. last, our last joke of the day right here. I never got married yet. On their wedding night, <laughs> the, young, the young minister entered the bedroom and found his bride lying nude on top of the covers. <gasps> he looks at her and says, I, I expected to find you on your knees by the side of the bed, he said with a frown. Well, okay, if you insist, but it usually gives me the hiccups. <laughs> joke two from the Pattersons. From the Patterson joke file this morning. Joke two. Can you explain A how this lipstick... Fun. Can you explain how this lipstick got on your underwear? The suspicious wife demanded. <coughs> no, I can't, he said. I distinctly remember taking them off. <laughs> <laughs> joke number three from oh the Pattersons. The These family of fun. High. Joke number three from the Pattersons. Do you know, gentlemen, what? how Eskimos have babies? Mm. I'm afraid to ask. How no. do they? They just rub noses until the little snot pops out. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. I'm Bad joke. That. I'm sorry. That, yeah. What a shame to come out with that one. After an operation, this is joke four from the Patterson. After an operation, a uh, young girl asked the doctor how long it would be... be uh, did we do this one? She asked him how long it would be before she and her boyfriend could resume sexual relations. I don't remember this one. I don't know. The doctor said no one has ever asked me that after a tonsillectomy. <laughs> okay. And the last one here. Define this, gentlemen. Our last joke from the Pattersons. Thank you, Pattersons, for these. You're a beautiful family. You are. <laughs> We're going to make our. You've made our last... Morning on the air. Very enjoyable. Yeah. As enjoyable as it could have been. Can you guys define pile carpeting? Pile carpeting. Pile carpeting. Can't define that, no. That's hair on hemorrhoids. <laughs> oh, God. Derby 88 is here. And if you're looking for a great place to entertain your friends, then look no more. The Sunset... Effective racing positions. First, it's Uncle Ron, followed by Scott Free, Duke, Jeff the Engineer, and Diamond John is in the fifth position. Next, it's Terry Meddard, followed by Tony Curry, the Weasel, and Troy the Scoop Roebuck holds the ninth position. Supercharged Jim Harley is next. Then it's Barry Harmon, Traffic McGill, and rounding out the field in position number 13, Future Bob. Okay, Judy, who do you want? Uh, let's try the weasel. You're gonna go with the weasel? Yeah. Here we go. They're off and running. Out of the gate, it's Uncle Ron and Tony Curry running neck and neck for first, followed by Jeff the Engineer, Future Bob, and Traffic McGill. Getting into the first turn, it's Uncle Ron and Tony Curry neck and neck. Jeff the Engineer is overtaken by Future Bob. I'll be Bob. falling any minute. Here comes Traffic McGill. Uncle Ron establishes first position, followed by Tony Curry and Future Bob as they head into the back stretch. It's Uncle Ron, Tony Curry, and Future Bob. And heading into the home stretch, Uncle Ron falls to take out Tony Curry. Okay. And as they near the finish, it's Future Bob, Traffic McGill, and Jeff the Engineer is moving ahead. And at the wire, it's Future Bob. And first, Jeff the Engineer takes second, and Traffic McGill finishes third. Yeah, I fell down again. He took